Connecting to IP-based devices is generally accomplished with the ip base t Manager and is fairly straightforward. The connection menu brings up the connection dialog box, but understanding the nuances of each series and some IP addressing basics goes a long way in avoiding connection issues. Connection to an ip base t device is just like any other on a network. Using the ip base t Manager tool, an integrator can manage devices in system configuration. Some common connection issues are IP address mismatch. When the connecting PC and the device are not on the same IP class or subnet, no connection can happen. The VLX defaults out of the box to an IP auto mode. This address is not DHCP, but an automatically assigned address based on its MAC address. Typically, this is an address in the class of 169.254x.y range. The IPX defaults to DHCP mode. That is, it obtains an address from a managed server. The IPX also has a separate address for the web configuration pages. This is of the 192.168.1.100. There are other factors that can inhibit connection, such as firewalls, that is, security hardware or software designed to minimize threats by limiting access, and managed switches with VLAN settings that may differ from your expectation. It is also advisable to turn off Wi-Fi when initially connecting to ip base t device. This could cause some confusion and result in no connection being made. IT managers are notorious, for good reason, for keeping a tight lid on what devices can be attached to the network they run. It is always good practice to have an open line of communication with the IT department. This, and having a working understanding of the facility's network needs, will ease the installation process. The VLX connects through a single IP address. The VLX defaults to an auto IP mode called Automatic Private IP Addressing, also abbreviated as APIPA. This is not a DHCP address, but one automatically assigned to a device when it can't connect to the network, and it's based on the MAC address of the unit. To connect to the VLX, we'll use the IP Base T Manager tool. Once we've chosen connection from the IP Base T Manager menu, a dialog box will appear. Here, we need to ensure that VLX is indicated, standalone is checked, and we choose the IP address we wish to connect through from the bottom pull-down menu. Then select Connect. Once connected, the IP base T manager will populate with the devices on the network. And from here, we can set up configurations, especially the web-based configuration pages that reside on the VLX unit itself. Here we can change things like the IP address we will use to live on the network. This new IP address will also be the address we connect to the web configuration pages to for the VLX. The IPX has two IP addresses, and therefore two MAC addresses. One address applies to the IP base T engine, while the other connects to the internal web server for configuration. The internal configuration pages default to a 192.168.1.100, and these should be changed when connecting to a network to avoid IP address conflicts. The IP base T engine connection will default to DHCP, but can be set through configuration pages. In IP base T manager via the connection dialog box, the IPX has the ability to choose between standalone or via sites. In standalone mode, the IP base T manager software will automatically open the server application. Here, you simply connect to the IP address of your computer's network card and connect directly to the devices to manage and configure. With the IPX radio button selected and the standalone option unchecked, the My Sites table becomes active. This is a list of devices or PCs that are running the server software independent of the PC you're using to connect with. Typically, this could be a separate PC, a QXP2, a QXT700, or others. In this scenario, the address we would connect to would not be the IPX, but the QXP2's IP address and this would then forward the information through it to the IPX devices.
The most common area for an error or inability to connect is in the computer itself. In this section, we're going to go through a few of the tools to help you identify and modify your network card settings. The first thing we need to know is the IP address of the computer at the current moment. The fastest way to do this is through the command prompt. Right click on your Windows icon, choose Run. In the dialog box that shows, type CMD for command prompt. This will bring up a command console. This is a text editor of sorts. At the prompt, usually it'll say C colon Windows with a slash or a system as you see here. Type in ipconfig space forward slash all. This will bring up a complete report on all of your network cards and their current IP address status. To change the IP network settings on your PC, right click on the Windows icon on the lower left, choose settings. This brings you to your Windows settings dialog box. Choose network and internet and in the status network status window, choose change adapter options. This will bring you to the control panel for your ethernet adapters. Choose the ethernet adapter that's appropriate. In this case, it's ethernet two. In the ethernet status window, choose properties. Double click on the internet protocol version four, that's TCP IP V4. Here we can change our IP address setting. We can use DHCP or set a static address. The NetSH tool is a command line scripting utility that allows you to quickly and efficiently modify the network configurations of the computer that you're currently running. To run this tool, you must be running in administrator mode. To do so, find the application, right click and use run as administrator. The NetSH command lets you do things like directly modify the adapter from the command prompt. In this example, we are using an interface to set the address of Ethernet 2 to a static IP address. In the same way, we can use the NetSH interface command to make the Ethernet adapter DHCP. While not necessary, the NetSH command can help you effectively and efficiently set up Ethernet adapters on your computer for different network configurations. There is a very handy help file in the command prompt that will get you far more advanced features. Connecting to IP based devices is fairly straightforward. But should you encounter connection problems, following some of these tips, tricks, and use of tools will help get you connected, configured, and on your way. You can find more tutorials and a growing knowledge database at auroramm.com.